I'm hoping this is right side up because <laughs> it doesn't look like it is. Let me turn it just in case. Okay. Hello, my name is Chrissy Hodges. I just wanted to make sure that that was, that was correct. Let me get this down a little bit so you don't have to be looking at my ceiling. So I am a contributor uh, via video for Mental Health on the Mighty monthly. Um, I'm an author of Pure OCD, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, and I do peer support as well as um, resource consultations for individuals with obsessive compulsive disorder. And I have been thinking a lot about today and this video and um, what I wanted to talk about. And at first, I, I thought, well, of course, I want to talk about my experience the last few weeks because it's felt very lonely and <laughs> very shameful. But then I thought, no, I should just stick with talking about something I can script, something I can write down, and something that I can tell you about, which is going to educate about OCD or informational about OCD. And then I thought, what are you doing? <laughs> like, this is the community that we should be sharing these things that we shouldn't be afraid to talk about when things aren't so good. And so today I'm going to be a little unscripted. I may not look at the comments just so you know. So I will go back through the comments later um, and write some stuff. But um, I want to tell you about the last few weeks that I've had. Oh, and I may get a little emotional, not really sure why, but, um, the last time I did a video, I was in San Francisco. <clears throat> and it was for the International OCD Foundation annual conference and it was awesome and it was phenomenal. If any of you know, being around people who just get what you've gone through, it just lifts this burden. And so leaving the conference, it was such a whirlwind of an awesome week. Leaving the conference was really tough I cried the whole last day, I, like the whole way to the airport on the BART in San Francisco. <laughs> and then I just thought, okay, let's get back to normal. But I felt that familiar, not excited to wake up in the morning feeling. The, my coffee doesn't taste very good coffee or, or a feeling and the fear of, uh-oh, <laughs> the world seems to be dulling a little. And I'm pretty far into recovery for many, many years. So I usually can recognize this and, and where this gets a little complex is um, a secondary fear of having the type of OCD that I have is that you don't really have OCD. And so sometimes when I'm feeling depressed and sometimes when I get triggered and I'm having new intrusive thoughts. I'm not excited about it, so don't get me wrong, but I, I sometimes will go, okay, that's right. This is OCD. That's right. I have a mental illness. That's right. Whew. But this time it did not feel that way. It felt, um, it felt really lonely and really scary. There wasn't any sort of like trigger or any sort of intrusive thought. Sorry, y'all. And then, um, and I know you've heard a lot about this and you're probably like, oh God, here we go again. But, um, and then that Friday, um, I heard that Chester Bennington died by suicide. And I'm gonna tell you like, I was, I was sad and, 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 you know, I can't, like, express to you, like, why, except for that his music and the way that he sang and did his lyrics and how he sang <clears throat> expressed kind of the rage that I've always felt <laughs> in, a, in a more healthy and productive way <laughs> um, through music. And so knowing that he passed and... How he passed. 
it just took me by surprise. So I was very sad that, that Friday that I found out. And I felt like an idiot. <laughs> you know, like, not that I judge people who are sad when celebrity die, celebrities die. That's not what I'm saying. You know, I felt it personally, I think, a little bit when, um, um, oh, God, I'm, I'm drawing a blank of his name. Uh, anyway, uh, but this felt personal. And I felt so stupid. And I was so embarrassed, like... How can I tell my support system and my partner and everybody else, like, I'm falling apart because a celebrity died? <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. In hindsight, that was a couple weeks ago. In hindsight, um, I had been building and that was the straw. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that, but just... Sorry, y'all. Bear with me. You know, we all go on to forums and we all watch or we all read things. And then out of curiosity, we go to the comments. And I should have. I should just know by now, right? Just don't go to the comments, Chrissy. <laughs> and that was it. That was what really just dragged me down this overwhelming doom of nobody gets it nobody you know nothing is going to change people really do think that suicide is weak and and stupid and and whatever else um I'm, I do not believe that by the way but this was where my head was at the time and so, you know, and then I, and then, I, you know, I started to feel angry about it and just the whole slew of emotions, you know, I mean, you've been on Yahoo comments, so you get it, <laughs> but it just felt, it felt scary. And, um, and here's, here's kind of where things got really scary for me was like I shared with you earlier, I, I usually am like, oh, look, it is OCD. So look, I am okay. And, and at this point, it was not and still doesn't feel like it. Just so you know, um, I would I would go to bed every night. And this is what I tell clients that I work with. Like, you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to think it's going to be gone. And then it's not. So just expect that. And I'm like, Christy, take your own advice. But I would wake up in the mornings and I would feel dull and I would feel gloom and I would feel this I'm scared I'm what if you know and I don't know what anyone else experiences when they go through depression but I do know that for individuals with OCD a lot of it comes to what ifs what if this never passes what if this is the time that it's and, and then and then coupled with the I'm trying to hide that I'm sad about like a celebrity dying because I feel weird about grieving someone I don't even know um, but also and I'm just gonna say it outright like if that could happen to him it could happen to me so what if this is the time what if this is the one time in a relapse where I spiral down and I never make it back and so and, and then the other piece of it is I just come off of this amazing week of with the OCD conference and everything else and feeling like I really have this a great place in advocacy but what kind of advocate <laughs> feels like crap <laughs> what kind of example is that setting <laughs> So do I back out for a while? What what do I do? Like the it, and, and I like to call it like the adv advocacy guilt. I work with people every day, and and what if they knew that I was struggling? Why would they take anything that I say as real or 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 you know as legitimate? Um, so I wrote a blog, um, I sat with this for a while, and then I wrote a blog, my blog is at wordpress.com, um, battling the OCD demon, and it 
and my partner encouraged me to do it. He was because I I I went to work out and it just fell flat. Like that's usually like my go-to. And and I want you to know, as someone who has a mental illness and and recognize these signs as someone in recovery, I knew what to do. And this is what I did: is I you know I made sure that I was taking my meds every day. I I contacted my support system um, to let them know. I hate feeling like you know that. They know, but and, and I talk about it, and I recognize it, and I'm making sure I'm doing everything every day that I would normally do. I'm not isolating. I'm going to exercise. I'm making sure I'm going to work. I'm making sure to do these things. But, y'all, I – it felt – okay, here's what it was like. I could not connect to the earth. Like, okay, that sounds – wait a minute. Let me back up. <laughs> that sounds supernatural. I couldn't connect – like Chrissy is driving down the road, Chrissy is grabbing coffee, Chrissy is talking to someone, but I couldn't connect to what I was doing. I didn't feel grounded in my feet. I didn't feel grounded. And it is, it was terrifying me. Because, I, and, and I was talking to someone earlier today about how much we take advantage of when we're feeling good. It's like, oh yay, look, maybe it'll never come back. And then when it doesn't feel good, you think, why did I not, <laughs> why, why did I not appreciate when things were good? Because now I can't, I feel like I'm floating. I, w I felt like I was floating above everything else. And I couldn't connect to my partner who's, who's seriously trying, you know, to help me feel better. And I couldn't connect to my friends who are calling me as my support system. So I found myself every single day doing the same thing that a lot of people do which is I'm fine I'm okay I'll get through this it's no big deal and 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 every morning I would wake up and and by the end of the day I was like what am I gonna do it's never gonna pass this is this is for real this time and I found myself about five days ago on the floor calling my friend Margaret bawling my head off I hate being on the floor <laughs> It's like a sign of bad times. And she just reminded me, this is what, this is what it is when you have a mental illness. And not that I don't remember and not that I need to be reminded, good goodness, I don't wanna be reminded all the time, but sometimes we forget. Sometimes it's very black and white Sometimes it's being way up here and everything's okay. And then when it hits, how do you process all of those emotions in it? I, so I just want you to know, like, I know that this video has zero structure. <laughs> and, and so I, I just wanted to share with you. I don't have a lot of wonderful things that are going to come out of this. Um, but I felt like maybe if you feel this way, you get it. Maybe if you were affected by the death of Chester Bennington or a friend or a relative that, and you were scared, then you get it. And maybe, which was probably the biggest thing, if you're affected by what people say and I, you know, I, I, I hesitate to use the word ignorance because I certainly don't want it to label somebody as ignorant. And I, I mean that in the most literal way I can. The ignorance of people, meaning the inability to understand what it's like to have a mental illness, is it just scares me sometimes. But, but, that's why I'm here. And that's why you are here. That's why we're all here. Because... Nothing can change how anyone thinks except for lived experience. I can't explain to people why Chester Bennington died and what he felt like, but I can explain to them what it feels like for me. And what it felt like for me when I almost died by suicide in those moments. And maybe that help, that will help them if a relative comes to them or a friend, 
So where am I at now? First of all, thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope the mental health on the mighty doesn't think I'm a huge downer. <laughs> um, thank you for letting me share this with you. Just knowing you're out there and you get it. And if I walked outside and you were standing there, I, I could hug you and you would know. <laughs> um, a few of the takeaways that I have learned through this and remember, I'm, I'm 19 years into medical recovery from my illness. I would say roughly about six or seven years in emotional recovery from my illness. And it's still hard for me. And I, I still, when I go through these few weeks, it, I get really scared. And I, um, but I also know it's an opportunity to learn. So I did write down a couple things that I've learned these last couple weeks. Once I decided to just get comfortable in it, um, so instead of fighting with the I wish I could feel differently, I felt better. I didn't feel better, like, yay, I'm, you know, I'm gonna run through a field eating ice cream better. But, <laughs> but I, felt, I felt okay in my skin. I didn't necessarily feel grounded, but I also felt like, okay, I'm recognizing where I am. I'm seeing that this might not pass, but I can feel connected at least to that feeling um, and maybe being comfortable and that will help. Um, asking for help or just telling people to me, like writing it and talking to people, saying it out loud made it real for me because I tend to burrow it in my head and think this isn't real, what if this isn't real, um, you know, and maybe if I don't say it out loud, it's not real, but saying it out loud actually helped because then it was making it known and, and then it gives, it paves the opportunity for people to go, oh yeah, I'm gonna call you tomorrow and I'm like, no, please don't call, you don't have to, oh, I'm going to, okay. <laughs> and I answer the phone and I'm glad they called and I'm glad they messaged me. You know who you are, my friends. Um, it also releases the shame of it because then they say you're not alone and I've been there or I'm feeling that right now or whatever else. Um, and one big thing I've learned in the last couple weeks, which is still really challenging, <laughs> is that after that straw broke when I saw all those horrible comments, I also saw so many people defending not defending suicide, but defending people who are suicidal and who are depressed and who have mental illness. People really coming to the defense of like, here's a link you should look at. Here's an advocate. Here's, this is my story. And no, we are not going to shame this person. And I've been through, and I loved it. And it made me realize I don't have to change one person at a time through the Yahoo comments. Because <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but what I can do is decide whether or not I want to go down that avenue, reading comments or whatever. I can set those boundaries. But also, I'm part of that movement. Y'all, we are pushing up the mountain almost to the precipice because the amount of people coming out and speaking out this time versus five ten years ago was unbelievable and that gave me hope that gave that gave me pride to be part of this community to be part of someone who isn't scared not that it's not that you know if you don't want to talk about your story then that's okay too but but people who aren't afraid to say hey this person has a mental health issue and we shouldn't judge them so those are the good things that came out of these couple weeks i don't know you know i'm i'm still sticking to my regimen of like Medication, going to work, making sure I exercise, making sure I get out of the house. 
And another big revelation that I had, which I always do every time I go through one of these funks, is it will pass. As scary as it is and as dark as the nights will get and as lonely as I feel. Just so you know, being able to share this with you here today makes me feel so much less alone. So I hope I didn't bring you down, <laughs> but that if anything that I have said has helped you wherever you are in your journey, I can tell you Chrissy Hodges in Denver, Colorado right now knows exactly how it feels and how scary it is and you are not alone. So with that, I am going to end. Um, thank you for the, taking the time to watch. Thank you for taking the time to understand and have empathy. Um, and thank you for being part of a community where we're actively using what we have been through to create change and create empathy. So in 10 years from now, we will never have to worry about what other people think about us being weak or being selfish or being nuts or whatever else they say. I truly believe with this community and the work that all of us are doing and sharing our lived experience that we are changing how people view mental health. And so thank you so much for letting me share this today. Um, I will come back through the comments and I will comment to people um, as I'm probably ruminating that I should not have talked about my lived experience. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I look forward to seeing you next month and I will definitely give you um, an update on how things go. If you um, are looking for peer support, especially for OCD or resources, please don't hesitate to reach out. I am at treatmentforocd.com. Um, and then my book is Pure OCD, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, available at Amazon or bookwalker.com. Thank you again, and I hope that you have a lovely evening. Bye.